Hey guys, Brian Schultz here with Cape Falcon Kayak and today I want to talk about paddling with Greenland paddles. Greenland paddles are the traditional kayak paddles that were used by Greenland subsistence hunters, but their use has really expanded into the modern day and all around the world as modern kayakers have realized that these paddles give you every bit as much paddling efficiency as a spoon bladed paddle but are also easy to build yourself, usually a bit less expensive, and also offer some advantages that spoon bladed paddles don't. Traditionally, Greenland paddles were a lot more variable than they are today. There was paddles that were very long, and paddles that were very short, paddles with very narrow blades, and paddles with much wider blades. Interestingly, some of the early collected examples actually had kind of more of a spoon bladed shape toward the end of the paddle. Today, when we talk about a Greenland kayak paddle, usually we're talking about something between six and a half and seven and a half feet long, between two and a half to three and a half inches wide at the tip of the blade. But I just think it's really important to mention that there was a broader historic context to this. And if you're interested more in the historic side of Greenland paddles, Harvey Golden's book Kayaks of Greenland has over a hundred traditional kayak surveys and a pretty big section on Greenland paddles as well. So let's talk about actually using a Greenland paddle. Now, whether or not you're using a modern paddle or a traditional paddle, the one thing that stays the same is the core mechanics in your body. Any good paddle stroke is gonna start from your foot, through your thigh, through the muscles in your stomach and the muscles in your back and is gonna finish with a forward driving hand. Now what's different between a modern paddle and a Greenland paddle is just the ergonomics of how you're driving that stroke. Now with a modern paddle like this one here, your hands are fairly wide on the loom and your elbows are a little bit higher, the whole stroke happens just a little bit higher up. And a proper stroke would look like winding up, stabbing into the water, rotating from your waist while pushing with your top hand and leaving your trailing arm mostly neutral, and then popping the stroke out of the water about a half to two thirds of the way back through the stroke. And that's gonna be your most efficient stroke for this type of paddle. Now there's nothing wrong with that. You can certainly train your brain to do it but it's not the most natural motion. It's not what your body naturally wants to do. Now a Greenland paddle on the other hand, your hands are a lot closer together on the loom of the paddle and your elbows are a lot lower. Your hand wraps a lot more lightly around the loom and the shoulder of the paddle and that results in a lot less fatigue in your wrists and your forearms. And the paddle stroke itself is just a really nice smooth motion where you're carrying all the way through with each stroke. And as long as you're driving that with those same powerful core mechanics, it's gonna be a really efficient paddling stroke. Now, it's true that Greenland paddles have less purchase on the water than a spoon bladed paddle, but that's pretty easy to compensate for with just a slightly increased cadence in your paddling stroke. And people like myself that are getting a little bit older and have some injuries have found that that compromise of a little bit less purchase on the water doesn't actually result in any less paddling efficiency, but it does result in a lot less fatiguing paddling experience over time. Now, one thing that people ask me often when they're first paddling with their Greenland paddles, it's common for the paddle to feel like it's fluttering through the water. And that's happening because water is peeling off one or the other edge alternately and creating that fluttering effect. And what we do to counteract that is actually just cant the blade forward at about a 30 degree angle. And that'll allow all the turbulence to peel off one side. And that will cause a couple good things to happen. It'll cause the flutter to stop, and it'll also cause you to get about 30% more power on each stroke. On the downside, it'll also wanna pull you over into the water. Now, this is something you naturally learn to resist with your body, just by leaning slightly the opposite direction, and it becomes natural within you know 20 minutes of doing it. But I just wanted to mention that, that as you're starting to introduce a canted stroke, you really want to you know, go slowly because your body needs to adjust, otherwise you're gonna pull yourself right into the water with that very first stroke. Now, something else that's worth mentioning here is anytime you see me paddling, you'll notice that I'm opening my top hand as I'm paddling. And whether you're working with a Greenland paddle or regular paddle, this is a great habit to get into because it gives you a nice stretch and it really helps to reduce the strain on your wrist and your forearm, but it also encourages you to push with your top hand as opposed to pulling with your lower arm. Now, anybody who's been through any kayaking instruction knows that we're always told to rotate from the torso, but my experience in teaching students is that when I tell them to rotate from the torso, within 10 minutes they're back to just being pretty much still and moving from their arms instead. 
Whereas if I teach this by telling people to push from the top hand on every stroke, it just naturally encourages the correct motion. So in addition to the forward stroke efficiency and I think the more comfortable paddling ergonomics, the thing that I like about Greenland paddles is just how good they are just as a versatile kayaking tool. So just starting with maneuvering strokes, the thing that really differentiates a Greenland paddle is that it's meant to be extended. So instead of just holding it in one place, if you want a really powerful stroke, you can just really quickly extend it out like that. And you can use that for a good strong initiation for a really aggressive edge turn while you're paddling or while you're sitting still to just kind of turn the kayak really powerfully. Now that same ability to extend the paddle also extends to rolling and sculling strokes as well. So with a conventional kayak paddle, you know, when you're going to do a roll, basically you're upside down, you try to get that spoon blade on top of the water and that spoon blade doesn't have a lot of lift because it's not an airfoil shape and also it's much closer to you because it's not being extended and those two things combined means there's only a very narrow window of opportunity for you to throw a really hard hip snap and turn that kayak over. Now with a Greenland paddle with this thing extended so much further out like that and also with its ability to gain lift you've got this huge amount of time to slowly, slowly continue your sweep. And anywhere in that giant window, you can just really gently turn the boat over with your hips. And it seems to be a lot more forgiving and it's a lot easier for people to learn rolling. Now, in addition to rolling, something that really isn't emphasized very much with a regular spoon bladed paddle is sculling. And sculling is where you're sitting on your side or on your back and you're just moving a paddle back and forth like this. And that kind of holds the paddle on the surface of the water. And the slower you do it, the more powerful it is. And when we're practicing traditional kayaking, sculling is a big part of it because it just really calms you down. It really helps to unwire a lot of your body's natural panic responses. Now let's talk about things that have nothing to do with paddling. Stabilizing your kayak. Everybody knows there's that kind of tippy moment when you're trying to get into a kayak, whether it's floating in the water or floating next to a dock. And there's no real good place to put your paddle at that moment. And something that's really cool about a Greenland paddle is you can put it behind you and you can kind of hold it there. And as long as you keep your eye on the tip of the paddle and keep the paddle slightly underwater, that offers you a rock solid stabilizer so you can get in and out of your kayak. Now this isn't absolutely necessary if you're paddling with a longer keyhole style cockpit, but if you're paddling a kayak with a shorter cockpit, like a traditional Greenland kayak, being able to set up your paddle behind you as a stabilizer to get in and out of the kayak is just an absolutely essential skill. Now, something I should mention here is that if you're using this technique to get on and off of a dock, it's really important that you trust the paddle and that you commit to keeping your eye on the tip of the paddle out here in the water. I know it's kind of hard to get your brain to trust that that's really going to support you, but if you get nervous and you look over at the dock, what tends to happen is that your center of gravity will automatically shift and this tip of the paddle is going to pop out of the water and then you're going to fall towards the dock, hit your head on the dock and go underwater. And none of that is what you want to have happen. Now kind of similarly while you're on the water, especially if you have a kayak that's rigged with traditional deck lines that are leather or rope, where you can actually stick the Greenland paddle kind of underneath it at an angle like that, suddenly that creates a stabilizer. So you can stop, you can eat lunch, and then when you're ready to start paddling, you can just pull it out of there and start paddling again. So really useful for that as well. So the final thing that a Greenland paddle is really awesome for is just as a spare paddle. Most of the time with conventional blades, I see people have two paddles on deck, two different halves, and, you know, I mean, that's not a terrible strategy, but I don't think it's likely that most people in a panicked real world situation are going to be able to grab a half of a paddle and roll up and then put the paddle together and start paddling. I know people who can do it. I can personally do it, but I don't think it's something that a lot of people are going to be able to do. It is much easier whether you're upright and something has just happened to your paddle or whether you're upside down to just grab a full length Greenland paddle off the front deck lines and then either roll up or start paddling. Now one thing I should mention as long as I'm talking about being underwater is just that Greenland paddles are a lot friendlier to your shoulders if you're getting trashed in big surf. If I'm paddling a whitewater kayak, I'm usually paddling with a whitewater kayak paddle. If I'm paddling a modern sea kayak or a Greenland kayak, I'm paddling with a Greenland paddle. And if I'm paddling with a surf kayak, I can usually go one way or the other and there's advantages and disadvantages to both. 
But one thing that I notice is that when I'm paddling with a modern paddle and I go over the falls hard enough in a kayak, usually either one end of that paddle gets ripped out of my hands or it yanks my body in a way that's a little harder than I would wish and I think is not terribly safe for your shoulders. Now, the Greenland paddle, on the other hand, if I'm getting beat pretty hard under the water, usually just the smaller surface area of this means that it's not getting pulled out of my hands and it's not yanking my body around nearly so much. After you've gotten trashed for, you know, 10, 15 seconds or even longer, and you've finally settled and it's time to throw a roll, if the regular modern paddle has spun in your hands at all, it can be a little bit confusing to try to get it oriented back to the surface of the water so you can throw a roll. Whereas the common sense indexing of a Greenland paddle, where the blades are directly in line with each other, just makes it a lot easier in a panic situation to get that blade up to the surface of the water and oriented the way you need it so you can throw a quick roll and get a breath and start paddling. Now the final thing I really like about Greenland paddles is that they're cheap and that you can build them yourself. And that's really what got me started on this whole entire kayak and paddle building adventure was just that I didn't have a lot of money and it was really pretty awesome that I could spend 20 to $50 on a stick of wood and just with a really basic toolkit in five or six hours have something that is every bit as good as a four or $500 kayaking paddle. So if you're interested in building your own Greenland paddle, I've got an hour long completely free video on the learning platform on my website that shows you everything start to finish for how to build a Greenland paddle. And if you wanna support what I do, I've also got a really inexpensive set of paddle plans there that you can buy if you want a little bit more detail on some of the sizing dimensions. If you're interested in just buying a paddle, we sell paddles. I'm also a big fan of paddles by Tom Moan of Thomas Boats here in the Pacific Northwest. Also Don Beal from Beal Paddles. On the East Coast, I like paddles by Bill Bremer from Lumpy Paddles and Chris Robb from Tuck2 Paddles. And I'm sure there's a lot of other really good paddle builders out there. Those are just the people I have personal experience with right now. Now, if you're watching this on YouTube, thanks for watching. Hopefully you got something out of this. Consider hitting that like and subscribe button and maybe head over to the Cape Falcon website, see what I got going on there. If you're watching this on my website, take care, have fun building your kayak or your paddle, and be safe on the water.